My name is Alita Kayon. I'm a forensic psychologist. Um, I graduated from the Forensic Masters program in 2005. So I now work as a specialist psychologist at Corrective Services New South Wales. Um, I got my job there fairly soon after graduating, so about six months after I graduated, so nine years. It's been a while. I applied through Jobs New South Wales. Um, it wasn't the first job that I sought out after graduating um, because my initial plans for my career after I graduated from the Masters program was I wanted to work in crime prevention rather than rehabilitation or reducing recidivism or anything like that. Um, but those jobs are fairly hard to get and quite competitive so when I first um, applied for the job in corrections it was meant to be a short-term goal um, but I was so surprised by how much I was learning and um, how different the job was that I'm sort of still there because I feel like I haven't sort of finished learning everything there is to learn yet so yeah it was it was it's a pleasant surprise. <laughs> well um, there's no such thing as a typical <laughs> typical day in corrections. Um, my main role is I work in risk assessment. So um, I currently work at the Metropolitan Ramandan Reception Centre and as the inmates come into custody, I will assess them for risk of self-harm or suicide or risk of harm to others. Um, so that's when they first come in, but really it depends on what, what the day needs of you. Um, so my role can range it changes on a day-to-day -day basis, but it can range from that sort of risk assessment type stuff to um, high intensity group work with inmates. Um, and that sort of role can be both within a correctional centre as well as in the community. So it's just where the needs are. Um, we don't hold specific positions in corrective services. We hold a role. So I'm part of psychology services. So it means I can go you know, in a correctional centre or out in the community. And it's, it, every day is liaising with a multidisciplinary group of people. So we liaise a lot with mental health staff, with parole, um, obviously with custodial staff as well, management. Um, and it's all about sort of assessing where the inmates are, if they're ready to take part in group programs, we can do um, assessment for treatment readiness, um, what do the inmates need in terms of taking part in group programs? We assess eligibility for different types of programs. Um, and the types of programs that inmates can take part in are so varied. They go from domestic violence to addiction to um, sex and violent offender programs. So there's a really wide range of assessments that we have to do. And often we can also do things like writing reports for for the courts, um, we can attend court as expert witnesses, so you sort of show up to work every day and just wait and see what Corrections has got waiting for you, so it's, it's a really interesting job, it's very good. Um, I don't know if this is exactly a project, but it is something that I work on um, within my role at the Remand Centre. Um, there's an area in the centre that's called the Special Management Unit and that is, um, it's an area where extreme high risk inmates go. So they might be inmates that have committed, you know, despicable crimes that they can't be housed with other inmates for their own safety. They might be inmates who have committed crimes in jail, um, you know, seriously assaulted staff or other inmates and they're doing time on segregation. Um, very, very sort of intense and, and intimidating and manipulating kind of individuals. Um, and I have the opportunity to work with um, the general manager of the jail and the executive staff of the jail with regards to um, uh, assessing those inmates, consulting with management in terms of um, where's a suitable 
you know, place to house them? Are they in a mental state where they continue to be a danger to other inmates? Or are they in a position where maybe they can come out of special management? You know, they've, they've done their time on there, they've, they've settled down, you know, they're more interactive and they can move back to the main jail population. So psychology services are sort of involved in, in that consultation process and that assessment process. And that sort of, I guess I call it a project, but it's more part of my role as well, um, is really rewarding for me because I feel like, um, you know, the information that I provide um, means a lot to the management decisions that are made for those particular inmates that are quite dangerous. So that's, that's my favourite. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, corrective services every year provides a psychology conference, a three-day psychology conference for all the psychologists. It is um, put together and chaired by psychologists within the department. Um, we have international speakers that come, we've got um, a lot of research, so everything that's sort of happening now, the up-to-date research, um, is discussed and spoken about. We get to um, speak to our executive, you know, our, our chief psychologists and they let us know the policies and procedures and how things are changing within corrective services. Um, and it's, it's really good. Every year is different um, and it just keeps us fresh and keeps us up to date. Um, what else? There's, uh, we have the Brush Farm Corrective Services Academy and so that's where all the custodial staff go as well to sort of learn their roles. Um, but for us, we can go and, you know, anything that you want to brush up on, you know, there are courses available in cultural awareness or um, domestic violence or, or anything that, you know, if in my role I feel like, oh, you know, I haven't done that for a while, I want to, I want to refresh myself. Brush Farm has, has a lot of um, courses available for that. And also Psychology Services itself provides specific training for psychologists, particularly in the assessment tools that are used for that risk assessment that we do. So um, we have training courses for things like the Static 99, the Stable and Acute 2007, um, the violence risk scale. So that training is sort of rolled out quite regularly so it keeps us fresh in terms of when we're doing those assessments for, for groups or if we're writing reports for court. Um, it keeps us you know, up to date with how we choose to um, provide that consultation. So it's very good, very regular. We also get um, clinical supervision. So we, we all have um, a, a supervisor assigned to each of us where we can have one-to-one -one supervision. There's also group supervision. Um, so it's, yeah, it's really, really good. Lots of training and development. And it's well supported by management, so it's great. Um, I think when I first applied for my job, I knew that it was going to be at the Raman Centre. And I didn't realise, I don't know why I didn't realise this, but I didn't realise that psychology is involved through the corrections process all the way from the beginning, all the way out into the community. So it's that through care. And my favourite part is the inmates, if I can say that, because, or the offenders, because my role allows me to see them when they very first come in, assess them for risk, assess their coping, determine what sort of programs or rehabilitation um, work that they can do, um, move them into that, into that part of, of, of their rehab and see them do the programs either in custody and then through to the community, further programs out in the community, help them again with their coping and adjustment to moving from the correctional system out into the community. And I'm involved that whole way. So I think that's the favourite part of my job because when you have an offender that's actually motivated to rehabilitate themselves and you see them go all the way through, it can actually be a very rewarding job. Um, and I think that that was really a pleasant surprise for me because I imagined that I was going into a job that was, you know, managing the scum and, and, you know, dealing with, you know, really horrible things. And, you know, of course you get that as part of your job, but there's such a reward to see them come out the other side. And, you know, sometimes the jail will get Christmas cards or thank you letters from families. And, and I didn't expect that, you know, so we, I feel like we do have great input and we can work with people to better themselves. And so, yeah, it's really rewarding.
For people looking for work, I think there are two, two main things that I would say. Um, the first would be pay attention to the company that you're applying for. What do they do? What, what is their mission statement? What is their goal in terms of the services that they provide? So really learn that and work out what they want from a psychologist and then provide that to them. So work out how your skills and experience can feed in to what that company needs a psychologist to do. So that would be my first thing. The second thing I would offer would be, with regards to the application process, give really clear and concise examples and information with regards to your skills and experience. So try not to waffle. Um, look at the eligibility criteria or the selection criteria. Think about what skills and experience you've got and apply that. So make it as clear as possible. So you don't want, at the end of an application, you don't want a company to read your application and go, well, do they have that skill or not? I'm not really sure. Be clear and concise and give them what they're asking for. I think they're my two main, two main um, offerings. I always knew that I wanted to be a forensic psychologist. That was my main interest even when I started my undergrad. Um, and I wasn't exactly sure what that entailed. Um, I, I did the forensic master's program at UNSW and got so much more out of it than what I expected. And I've really been able to utilise everything that I learnt from the master's program and, and I've been lucky to have a long and rewarding career as a forensic psychologist and I would do the same again if I got the opportunity again.